And another Benjamin here had a question about UPSs, not the delivery service, but uh, the backup batteries that we use to protect our equipment from surges and power outages. He wanted to know if I had any suggestions. And what I would do first, especially because he's looking to power a modem, a router, a switch, and a NAS, uh, is to head over to APC's calculator uh, because you can calculate the total draw in watts and then how long you want to keep everything up for and they'll make some recommendations on capacity for you. Uh, I've had good luck with the APCs over the years. Uh, one thing to note with these UPS systems, no matter where you buy one from, is that the batteries are often lead acid batteries and you'll have to replace them every couple of years even if you don't use them all that much and you often find out the hard way when your battery is gone. So a lot of the nicer UPS devices have a tester so you can make sure the battery can uh, maintain some load, uh, but you'll often find that five years goes by real quick and suddenly your UPS isn't actually doing what it's supposed to do. So definitely keep an eye on those batteries over time, or if you wanna go for a more expensive lithium ion one, you might get a little more life out of that. Uh, what I do with my Synology NAS is actually plug the uh, APC's USB port into my NAS. And the reason is, is that uh, on Synology and I think on WD as well, uh, and I think QNAP supports these too, uh, they have the ability to work with that UPS so that if your power goes out, it will shut down the NAS after a certain length of time. Uh, now, in my house, I've got a backup generator. So usually it's just enough to keep everything going until the generator kicks on. But if you uh, don't have that, you can figure out how many uh, seconds you will get out of your particular uh, power device and then set a timer. So on mine, if the generator doesn't kick in, after 10 minutes, it will instruct the NAS to safely shut itself down. And that is a really helpful tool to have. The problem I'm finding with this though is that most of the small office and home devices don't allow you to connect more than one device in this way. So I'd love to have my second NAS plugged into the uh, UPS, UP, UPS is USB as well, but I can't. And that's my biggest frustration is that there's no real standard here I'm seeing to have it go over the network or something and just let everything know to shut itself down. So it's a one-off kind of thing here, but at least for my uh, Synology device where a lot of my sensitive data is stored, I know that if the power doesn't come on in 10 minutes, the drive uh, will shut itself down automatically. And what's also cool is that I get uh, these little notifications when there are power blips. So you can see we had one here that only lasted for a couple of seconds, but I got a note here to say that the server went on battery, and then another note here to say that the power came back on. So that was pretty cool to see that. Now Synology has a pretty extensive list of what is compatible, and I would imagine other NAS manufacturers have similar compatibility lists. So after you pick one out, uh, go and make sure it's going to work with your particular hardware configuration so that when it arrives, you can get everything integrated and working together. This channel is brought to you by the LON.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.